This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has been ordered to complete a meaningful environmental impact study on the Dakota Access Pipeline. A federal judge issued that order Wednesday and will consider whether to shut the pipeline down until the study is complete. A lawyer for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe says it's about time. Victoria Wicks reports. Federal Judge James Boesberg says in his written opinion that too many questions remain unanswered when it comes to the safety of the Dakota Access Pipeline, or DAPL. Boesberg says the Corps did not adequately address concerns raised by tribes' experts that the pipeline suffered from serious flaws that could result in extensive environmental harm in the event of a spill. The judge notes that the Corps instead relied on reports drawn up by a third-party contractor working for DAPL and came to the conclusion that the pipeline's crossing under the Missouri River does not pose significant environmental risks. Jan Hasselman of Earth Justice represents the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. The order to require a full environmental impact statement is a huge victory for the tribe. It's what we've been asking for since the very beginning of the process. It will finally provide some transparency and some accountability about the risks and impacts of spills and what it would mean for the Standing Rock people and others. Hasselman says the Corps has pointed to leak detection systems as ensuring safety, but those systems have been shown to fail 80% of the time. He says it makes sense to shut the pipeline down, at least for now. In our view, it is totally inappropriate to continue operating a pipeline with known risks to the tribe while it's being studied. The judge has instructed tribes and the Corps to submit briefs arguing the issue of pipeline closure. I'm Victoria Wicks. Volunteers in Rapid City, South Dakota, are putting care packages together for Native elders as many are finding it tough to get needed supplies amid COVID-19. China Lockett has more. Sunny Red Bear and her partner are delivering supplies to seniors in predominantly Native communities. We're starting in Lakota homes and after today we'll reach about 55 homes so far. Their project started about a week ago. Packages include canned goods, grooming, and cleaning supplies. Our goal is just to continue to take in donations and at least to have our elders have a kind of a startup package of things that they're going to need during this time in quarantine because a lot of the supplies out there is very limited and then also they don't necessarily have the transportation or the capability of going out themselves and getting these things. Red Bear says this can be a lonely time for elders and they want this effort to remind them they matter. Nicole Bosner is Sunny's partner. She says only they handle the packages and deliveries. They wear gloves and take precautions to keep recipients safe. Everybody has been super grateful with what we've been giving them. Sunny and I have just tried to focus on essentials for a household. We visited a few elders who hadn't left their house in about seven days. So we just want to make sure that they have like things that we would personally use in our home. Bosner says people nominate elders to receive care packages on Facebook, then send the names and addresses for deliveries. We just want to make sure that our elders are taken care of. A lot of elders, especially in the Native American community, are normally raising their grandkids and their great-grandkids, so a lot of them are in need of more supplies. The women are working with a nonprofit that will cover any taxes on monetary donations. If possible, they may also consider reoccurring deliveries for elders. I'm Chenna Lockett in Rapid City. And I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by the Sanoski Chambers Law Firm, championing tribal sovereignty and defending Native American rights since 1976 with offices in Washington, D.C., New Mexico, California, and Alaska. Support by BNSF Railway, moving our economy for over 165 years. Our vision is to operate injury and accident-free with safety programs, training, and technology. More at bnsf.com slash tribal relations. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.